we were very blessed um, that we, A, have a very, very loyal user base, right? We, the Hooters Nation, as we like to refer to it, is alive and well. Um, and, and then the second piece of that is, we all know how the world turned on a dime, but we had deep partnerships and relationships with the DSP providers, delivery service providers, mm -hmm. you know, way before the pandemic ever came along. So for us, when the dine-in business suddenly stopped overnight, we were able to really then leverage that relationship and our experience on the delivery side and the delivery platform. So that, that's really what enabled us to do so well. And then as the pandemic transitioned and you know some states opened back up, some states relaxed some of the uh, the curfews and the opening in the hours. Um, again, very honored to have such a loyal customer base that they came back very quick. They came back very fast. They came back more frequent. So again, our, our core demographic, our core Hooters fan uh, is really what got us through this pandemic. And uh, we're just, we're just happy that we're able to, you know, get back to the full dine-in experience now. And, and, and some people are still using it both ways, right? Uh, the beauty of our brand is that you can use this any way you want, whenever you're ready, as we like to say. But if you, if you don't feel like uh, cooking, uh, okay, great. That happened during the pandemic. You, you had no choice, right? But now you're tired of cooking. You want to get out of the house and you're able to get back out and experience the, the full service Hooter. So we've been very, very fortunate. So you had a already a, a partnerships with the third party delivery companies. Is that because of Hoots Wings that you'd already started opening in 2017? Or was it because you were already, you, I mean, everybody knew that delivery was going to be a growing part of the business even before the pandemic. So was it was it Hoots Wings or your own anticipation of the core brand or both? Or Before the pandemic, like you indicated, our core brand, our product was already being consumed at home. It was already being picked up and or delivered. So so, the, so that product and that, that mechanism to have the food delivered off premise already existed. So, and you know, no particular order, but the Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, you know, Favor, Bite, all, we were partnered with everyone so as opposed to doing an exclusive deal. So we were really able again to, to give our consumer exactly what they wanted, the way they wanted. And some folks are brand loyal to different providers and you've only got so much real estate on your phone. Um, so we worked with everyone. And then that enabled us to not only, you know, continue on the core brand, but then as Hoots came along, you know, Hoots Wings then was a natural extension of that. We were able to leverage the partnerships and the relationships and just sort of tack that on to the existing portfolio. So let me see if I understand correctly. Hoots is the fast casual brand that you started in 2017, right? Correct. We, we took a subset of the menu and, and took the top selling best items that were really delivered or picked up and said, let's just make the fast casual version of ourselves. And then that's really where it came from. Um, and out of that, that menu, it wasn't what Brett liked or what Sal liked. We just said, hey, what does the consumer like? Right. Really drove the mechanism. So um, we probably started designing that back in 2014, 2013. We had some early ideas. It, it, it took us a little while. I'll be the first to admit I'm not that bright, but we, we kind of figured it out over time. And uh, when 17 came along, then we were ready to do the first prototype we opened in Cicero, which is a outside of Chicago, it was the first unit. Right, and now you have seven, right? Three in Atlanta, three in Chicagoland, and one, I forget where. Uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, correct. Yep. And, but then there's Hoots Wings. Is that your virtual brand? So, so Hoots Wings and Hoots is the same thing. It, it, okay, it, all right. The brick and mortar. Um, what's really interesting is when you talk about the virtual brand, you know, again, prior to the pandemic, uh, we actually have Hootie's Burger Bar, um, which is a virtual concept. Uh, actually, one of the delivery providers came to us and said, hey, we'd love to do this idea with you based on our search. And they came up with the idea and the need for burgers. So we said, great, you can order your Hootie's Burger Bar. And oh, by the way, do you want some wings? Do you want some fries? So it was a natural menu. And then since then, with the explosion of the virtual brands, we actually now have Hootie's Bait and Tackle, um, which is our seafood items that we have, but you can still get the wings added on an additional product. And we just launched um, Hootie's uh, Chicken Tenders. So um, again, all within the same kitchen, same SKUs, but it's been a really nice you know, marketing piece to be able to partner with the DSPs to expand into these virtuals. We got a few more up our sleeves, but uh, 
Uh, perhaps for our next interview, I'll have more detail on those. So why do you need a different virtual brand for every category of your menu? Does that, does that draw your customers more easily or, or what does it do? Yeah, good question. And, and it's interesting, some of the feedback that we got from the delivery providers, um, again, because we've got a large national footprint, right? So, so when those delivery providers partner with us, it's not that they're just getting, you know, Sal's little corner deli, right? They're, they're getting a footprint across the country, so therefore they can really move the volume. They came to us and said, hey, these are some of the items that we feel is a void or a need in the marketplace, right? So in this particular example, what really launched it for us was, was Uber Eats. They said, hey, burgers, big demand, big searched item. Um, besides all the other players in the category, we feel there's an opportunity to help launch some more virtual ideas around that. So we already have a phenomenal burger on the menu. It just made sense then. We already have the SKUs. We're already putting it in a bag. They're already used to picking it up at our restaurants. Um, and then you could add on more products. It was just sort of a natural extension. So it really, really served them uh, for their need in terms of what their consumers were looking for. And then just add it on to sales for us um, in terms of the virtual component. So it contributes to incremental sales. Yes. I mean, clearly it's a different occasion if someone's going to eat in the restaurant or they're going to get takeout or delivery. So that would totally, be incremental. Totally different, right? And, and, and you touched on a really good point, right? Depending on your schedule and your life, you know, pre-pandemic, pandemic, and now post-pandemic, um, how do you want to use our brand, right? It, it, somebody taught me a long time ago, it, it's not what you think about a brand. It's how you feel when you interact with that brand. And I think that's really the key cornerstone for us. Our consumer, when they come in, they know it's going to be the escape from the rigors of everyday life, right? Our, our concept lends itself to being casual and carefree and, you know, you can spill food on the floor perhaps or the games on TV and there's a, a family at one table and there's a softball team at another. So, but if you don't want that experience or maybe you're still not comfortable getting out of the house yet, you have the absolute tremendous opportunity then to get all those products delivered or picked up in different forms or fashion. So um, it really gives us a lot of flexibility, which has been very helpful coming out of the pandemic. When even if you're comfortable going out, maybe you don't want to put your shoes on. And right. So, <laughs> I mean, you, you were getting all of this off the ground before the pandemic. There was already a demand for, for more people eating your food at home. Absolutely. And, and really the pandemic just put an accelerant on that, right? When we got to the point where, I mean, we started selling cocktails to go and beer to go and, you know, oh, wings. But now all of a sudden I'm, I'm feeding a family of four or, or perhaps you were maybe cheating and meeting on the driveway with your neighbors and, and suddenly became larger packs or bundles and let's get some burgers and we'll get some fries on there. So, so that the size of the basket actually increased. Um, but it was really helpful that, again, we had those partnerships because you know, folks that tried to get into the delivery business was really too late in terms of the technology and getting the service and being able to ramp up with the point of sale and the integration. So, um, you know, humbly, we, we were a little ahead of our time on that and it just continues to serve as well. It's different from uh, in restaurant dining because customers pay delivery fees, you pay delivery fees. How, how have your franchisees managed costs uh, in the wake of, in the face of added costs from delivery? Yeah, yeah, great question. You know, we're, we're all in that boat, right? And, and we're all similar, whether it's us as the franchisor or our franchisee partners that we have. And, and I say partners because that is critical, right? There, there's, no, there's no successful franchisor without successful franchisees and vice versa. So, you know, in terms of the cost structure, we've been able to help them on a little bit of support size because of the scale, right? And that's given us a little bit of leverage. It's given us the ability to have some, some good partnerships and good dialogue around what that cost structure looks like. But, but the consumer, again, is really is what is driving it. And, and because of the convenience factor, because of the pandemic, you're right, there, there's extra fees, uh, there's fees on top of fees, there's delivery fees, there's surcharges, there's, there's gratuities. Um, so, but you don't have to leave your home or it's the convenience factor or you get it the way you want it when you want it. So uh, we find that across many sectors, the consumer is willing to pay for that. Um, and then how can we best support our stores and our franchisees to make sure that they have the delivery platforms, they have the technology um, to make sure that they can get the ordering in, the partnerships with the DSPs, and then help leverage some of the cost side uh, with what the cost and the fee structure looks like coming from the provider.